10,881 and 11,290 respectively. The wrath of the farmers was seen by the whole world when they protested against the three unjust farm laws passed without consulting them. The FM did not even acknowledge the causes for the plight of the farmers, rising input costs, insufficient and uncertain MSP, biased import and export policy, and crop insurance that is either absent or denied. Under the NDA's 10-year rule, a happy farmer is an oxymoron. The FM spoke about GDP, but she did not speak about the per capita income. She spoke about free grain to 80 crore persons, but she did not speak about India's rank in the global hunger index or to widespread malnutrition among children, leading to a high proportion of stunting and wasting. She barely referred to inflation, but she did not refer to the fact that food inflation currently is 7.7%, that real wages for casual workers have stagnated for four years, and the fact that there is an increase in the proportion of workers dependent on agriculture. The boasts about establishing numerous educational institutions and aims like hospitals must be pitted against the facts that thousands of teaching posts are vacant in central universities and central government established institutions, especially posts reserved for SC, ST, and OBC. The new hospitals do not have sufficient doctors, nurses, and supporting medical staff or equipment. The allocation in the 2024-25 budget for health is 1.8% and for education, 2.5% of total expenditure. None of the boasts can be accomplished with such low expenditure. The FM spoke about minimum government and maximum governance. The minimum government policy in reality has undermined federalism starved state governments of funds and virtually reduced the third tier of governance, panchayats and municipalities, to ciphers. The overwhelming majority of the people are dependent on the third tier of government for their services, but that tier have been virtually deprived of human and financial resources. Federalism has been considerably weakened by the central government taking over, rather usurping, the executive and legislative powers of state governments. The fundamental flaw in the NDA's approach to the economy and governance is that it is biased in favor of the rich. It is a government of the rich, by the rich, and for the rich. The government is either ignorant or callous to the fact that the top 10% owns 60% of the nation's wealth and earns 57% of the national income, and that income inequality has widened significantly in the last 10 years. This outcome is because of the lower growth rate during the 10-year period, as against the UPA period. In the last year of UPA, 2013-14, we left a GDP growth rate of 6.4% and an average growth rate of 7.5%. In the NDA period, the average growth rate has been less than 6%. Since it is an interim budget, I shall say no more. However, the interim budget and what went before in the last 10 years have left us with a lot to talk about in the days ahead. Now I shall request my colleague, uh, Mr. Gaurav Gogai, to say the substance of my statement in Hindi. Dhanyavad, Adarnya Chidamram ji. Dosto, Pradhan Mantri Modi ji ke sarkar ki 
इस आखिरी बजट में गरीब को खोखले वायदे के अलावा कुछ नहीं मिला मध्यम वर्ग उनका तो नाम भी आजकल प्रधानमंत्री और वित्त मंत्री अपने बजट स्पीच में लेना बंद कर चुके हैं और ये जो सरकार है Right, so the Congress hitting out at the center after Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman presented the government's interim budget ahead of the Lok Sabha elections, saying that this is uh, nothing but uh, you know just uh, words at play that Finance Minister has presented in the Parliament that there is nothing for the poor of the country and uh, that it doesn't benefit anybody as such. So the opposition members, of course, uh, since the budget speech ended in the parliament have uh, given their responses their reactions to the interim budget presented by the finance minister nirmala sitaraman today where they said that this interim budget is basically for the rich of the country and doesn't speak or benefit uh, anybody who is poor in india peter damram senior leader of the congress saying that uh, this budget is by the rich of the rich and for the rich Well, it was uh, one of the shortest speeches uh, on record in the budget, and so not very much came out of it. As usual, a lot of rhetorical language, very little concrete on implementation, some serious questions about areas of omission, no reference to the success or failure of the PLI scheme, which is taking so much money. She talked about foreign investment without acknowledging that investment has come down significantly. She talked, frankly. about a uh, number of things that are couched in vague language like for confidence and hope and so on but when it comes to hard figures there were very few figures available for example she talked about foreign direct investment without acknowledging that it has come down as a percentage of gdp not gone up she talked about um, she didn't talk about unemployment which has gone up to record levels she didn't talk about youth unemployment she didn't talk about declining female labor participation when talking about nari shakti so there were so many omissions i must say that this is going to be a very very uh, disappointing speech in terms of being couched entirely in generalities and without enough substance nor any willingness to address the specific problems of the economy this is a vote on account to keep the government solvent over the first quarter of the next financial year what is extremely worrying is the increasing fiscal deficit because the numbers which have been presented by the finance minister clearly demonstrate that over 18 lakh crores is the unfunded extent of the union budget for this year and this number is only going to increase over the next year if you leave that aside for a moment the rest of the budget speech was mere grandstanding it was like driving looking into the rear view mirror rather than looking ahead so therefore the finance minister spent all her time in extolling her own track record which uh, obviously is questionable and trying to run down what had happened 10 years back we will reply to it in great detail when the debate on the budget takes place asli budget to july mein aayega entry budget mein koi aisi baat nahi nahi mujhe kuch batana nahi hai ye to wohi prana budget chal raha hai jo kaam hai wo karni hai 